There's a type of radical reaction that is important in organic chemistry, not because it's useful to make compounds, but quite the opposite, because it plays a significant role in destruction. Destruction of synthetic organic materials, destruction of materials in the body, and the creation of products from normal organic compounds that actually in some cases are highly explosive and therefore very dangerous. So let's take a look at the process. It's a radical reaction. It involves abstraction of a hydrogen from a carbon. And this abstraction may actually be caused by molecular oxygen itself. Molecular ox oxygen can be represented reasonably as a diradical. And if we think of this as a diradical, it won't be too surprising that this radical can abstract a hydrogen from carbon. So we'll use the fishhook arrow to show bond formation and bond cleavage, a process that leads to formation of a carbon radical, plus the hydroperoxy radical, which can go on to stabilize itself. This guy, as a radical, can react with molecular oxygen, often does. Fish hook arrows. We're not breaking anything here. We're making a bond, and that's the only thing that's happening. So this is a little different from our normal propagation steps. But you see it also bears some similarity to the normal propagation steps because it results in formation of another radical. Now this guy can take a hydrogen from another carbon atom to continue the chain up here, or can find a hydrogen from some other source but in any case, ultimately picks up a hydrogen on oxygen to form a type of compound called a hydroperoxy. It is these guys that are the degradation product of normal organic compounds that start out like this. It is these guys that might be explosive. It is these guys that can lead to other products that are a problem of one kind or another, whether it's in the body or in spoiling of food. Let's look at a couple examples. For whatever reason, carbon atoms that have oxygen attached are particularly susceptible to radical formation by the process that I showed just up above. And the result turns out to be hydroperoxide, like I showed here, of this type. Now this compound is a compound called diethyl ether, diethyl ether, and it's widely used in the organic lab as a solvent. It's a good solvent, has a low boiling point, easy to get rid of but it's highly flammable, and it has a tendency to react with molecular oxygen by this process here, autoxidation, to form this hydroperoxide. And these guys are notoriously explosive. So just on standing, diethyl ether will form the diethyl ether hydroperoxide. And there are many, many reports of laboratory explosions that resulted from using ether that had stood a while in the presence of oxygen and over time underwent autoxidation to the extent that this hydroperoxide was in sufficient quantities to actually be dangerously explosive. Organic compounds that have readily abstracted hydrogens are particularly susceptible to autoxidation. So, for example, a hydrogen at this position, which is an allylic position, is particularly susceptible to autoxidation because the intermediate radical that's formed by abstraction of this hydrogen is resonance stabilized. You might practice your resonance structures by taking a look at just the two structures that would be formed there. But in any case, uh, we're talking about ultimately oxidation at an analytic position to form a hydroperoxide. And this occurs more readily than with regular organic compounds. Because alkyl chains like this, with a double bond in it, are characteristic of fats and oils, naturally occurring compounds, those compounds are susceptible to spoiling in the presence of oxygen because they have the double bonds and therefore allylic positions that undergo autoxidation. So this type of process is a process that is responsible for spoiling of oils and fats in foods and food products. Speaking of fats and oils, if you look at the specific structure of these compounds, they have long chains. It's not uncommon to have positions that are doubly allylic and therefore very susceptible to autoxidation. And the hydroperoxide that results can degrade to form 
compounds that are particularly bad actors in terms of taste and smell and account for the rancid bad odors and smells as some dairy products, for instance, spoil. This intoxication process also occurs in the body to cause random damage to many kinds of molecules, including genetic material. And this intoxication process, therefore, is one that uh, people seek to reduce by recommending that people take antioxidants as supplements or by eating foods that are especially high in compounds such as vitamin C, which are known to be antioxidants. Those antioxidants act by interrupting these two steps so that as radicals are formed, antioxidants quench these radicals by rapidly reacting with them and prevent the further continuation of the chain reaction that leads to hydroperoxides. So these autoxidation reactions are characteristic of compounds that have CHs, that's almost all organic compounds, ones that have allylic positions or uh, carbons that have oxygen attached are and especially subject to autoxidation to lead to hydroperoxides that may be explosive or may lead to compounds that decompose to compounds that taste bad, smell bad, account for the spoilage of food.